Thank you very much, a Cultural Tool. That, that, that was, was a colorful, colorful display. display. Once again, welcome, welcome to the 2023 Annual General and Scientific Conference of the Ghana College of Pharmacists. We will begin with an opening prayer. Can I call onto the podium Reverend Jonathan Marty to give us the opening prayer? Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for this opportunity to live to see today. And for the opportunity for us to celebrate progress and to celebrate success. Which progress and success would have been possible without your grace. That's why, Lord, at this point in time, we want to acknowledge you and ask that you grace this occasion with your presence and bless all of us and make this day a memorable one for all of us and let it be an inspiration for others who look forward to their time when we will celebrate their success with them this is our prayer in jesus name amen so ladies and gentlemen we are happy to be here today and um, on such an event, we have a very great man to chair the session. And we want to actually introduce our chair for today. And per his pedigree, I would like to call on Osebo Zushiaman, who is a linguist, and then he would introduce our chairman for today. Yes, let's give it up. Some <laughs> Nanti when they are unfold Jacro to Chicro, Chicro, he said, and Banak, the Chia, Yakona, see you today. A whom you are home, ha. A person may carco or that the Acacia Nasia was it. O three passa, the true one was here, pa, a supra for Uya Kubri. Sir Tecremanda, Bujemna, Mojedi of Risania, Mr. Wadabako, Prono, two and Jenna Catches, Uyame, Onya Nedini. And then you are too new for so long, and I can pronounce that that is when I'm on yet in the year. Sir, when I'm in the year, now it's a year, you say, 
Ghana College of Pharmacists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Na yeah, yeah, yeah. Na me fa ko nya wo isu mama fisi apa. Afi nko bra metu ya fisi. Afi ti se ni e wo nkwa. Awon den, po mo den, kwa wisan, opinya, iyedi. Ye kwa ye nko na basape. Ye nko na basenya. Ye si enti asensua. Ye si ka koko nko ama ye. Enon shua wanka amen. E sana mo tenen. Omani shi amon sumbi enembi. Amere ya Man, Man tu unini saadi anchine Mwa mwisi ya mfeno ointment Kamu so ubu na mele yao Na se ebro so trasu ya Na oman anka yedi ya sana ebro nechi Ende mwisi ma ya mburu ni biyo na ya mfa embrocation Omani si ya monso menemi Fama se so se minso meka Omae mo seni ya sabi mpredi ya sabiura Asen lof ba eleksi huni ya no Saansu na fama se so mo huni ya wo meyim Enti se mo a eso tira kwa ba enko ma fama se so e Afi Omanga su nyi na tu nko yan shen en su se Se e mwen hi ya se Empe en kasa wakan ya bem se sebi Esu ne kura Esu ne kura pa Esu na sonu diya me kura, ne esu na butu kura, ne esu na kura, kron kron diya. Ene yang... Kwa afwa kutu... Sa aman ke kuna kutu tinti eji mi eji mbe. Ansasa se kuna nansa se kuna mwa okromansa mwa dadia wongo ni keshiri. Sabere ma brempo nga okwea na ju maadeshi ni mkwe wangi. O brempo ntoto tene dampa nkesi asia yede chuni kesi di ne kuru. Ni ofu dumu dupo safo tonfroma sa se wosui Upumpunia ya mwafui Pumpunia janyana wasini ya ofu dupo ntenyana wesidu Bili ya se kwa mfrani mpente wonka hongu ya gwanu wa sambu wa mwegwe Aya kwa konana ijechu ya wano na uso newo Ose sebi ya wako sebi ya usu ujan shua sebi Anka hongu dupo ntedi yepe Bila, ome nginesh ya usi ya asro ya mwana dodo Asuni na tungo mandi shia mungu mimi na mi ya mfanyi ya mungu mungu shia. Okumi ni okumi ni ofa buta okusumi ya sara. Acha nisha mai mida wasi. Hello. Good morning, everybody. Are we still expecting the honorable minister? Uh, deputy, okay. Farm Joseph in Siania, we are our own president. Farm Yvonne Chua Siku, Director of the College, members of the Governing Council, members of the Academic Board, heads of agencies here present, fellows and preceptors of the College, members of the College, fellowship and membership inductees, members of the media, 
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this year's AGM. We had a great meeting last year with the introduction for the first time of a scientific session in our AGM. We are back together to receive reports and deliberate on issues that concerns us. I think this is a great opportunity for us all to contribute to the growth and development of our college. This year, due to the circumstances beyond our control, we have been constrained at the last minute to do some rescheduling of our AGM and have a packed one-day program. Although we have had one-day AGM programs in the past, with the introduction of a scientific program, the two-day meeting provided an opportunity for more in-depth discussion during the business sessions. Packing all our activities into one day means we have a lot to cover today. So, my opening remarks will be very brief so we can get into the thick of things. We have quite a long program and every aspect of it is very important. I will urge us all to remain present throughout the day. Let us celebrate with our inductees and congratulate them when the time comes. Let's pay attention to all the speeches that will be presented here today. Let's participate actively in a scientific program and let's contribute constructively during the business session. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, I declare the AGM 2023 duly opened. You are all welcome and have an enjoyable and fruitful day. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nana Chair, for that brief opening remarks. I would like to call on the next speaker. She is I will first of all, I will first of all say she's a mother. I have worked with her closely in the last three, getting to four years. And it's amazing that we are almost clocking four years and it only looks like it's, it's been just one year. I wish for more years with her. She's a mother, she's a pharmacist, a pharmacologist, a lawyer, a management consultant, an educator, an experienced leadership governance, policy and human resource manager. And she's the immediate past vice president of the Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana. Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen, with all honors, help me welcome Madam Yvonne Yerin Choi to the podium. Thank you very much. Ordinary Mukwa Fakutu the third, Omahi of Akwemu and Chairman of the Governing Council of Ghana College of Pharmacists. Distinguished past and present members of the Governing Council, Pharmacist Joseph Kujo Insiani Wagbe, President of the College, distinguished past and present members of the academic board, pharmacist professor Mrs. Frances Telmakwabia Ousudeku, our thematic speaker for today, fellows and members of the college, CEOs of agencies present, our venerable preceptors from all our training sites, fellowship and membership inductees and their family members, our distinguished partners in the execution of our mandate, distinguished guests, 
members of the media, ladies and gentlemen. Please permit me to welcome you to AGM and Scientific Conference 2023. Our annual general meetings offer us a good opportunity to share with you, our stakeholders, what has happened in the past year, tell you about our vision for the future, and receive critical inputs from you to help us sharpen the vision and strengthen our resolve. Our theme for this year is born from learnings over the past few years. We have learned from COVID-19 and other global happenings that we need resilience if we are to make progress in the face of challenges, whether or not they are foreseen. Resilience is also critical if we can meet the MDGs and sustain progress along that trajectory. So this year, our theme is building resilience into the delivery of pharmaceutical services. And we have a seasoned trainer and practitioner as our thematic speaker. And she will share insights on this theme, this theme with us. We are also building on learnings from introducing the scientific session to our AGM. You may recall that when we introduced the scientific session last year, we had one plenary to hear from our participants. This year, we have an impressive number of scientists who are excited to share their knowledge and research findings with us. We will therefore be having parallel sessions for oral presentations in addition to having posters from the scientists. And I'm sure all of us have seen some of the posters already. And so please, if you haven't seen them, take time to check out the posters during the breaks. They are beautiful and also very informative. And don't miss out on the breakout sessions. The faculties will also be presenting their activities over the last year to their stakeholders during the business session. It is expected to lead to discussions on all the relevant facets that are required to achieve the mandate of the college with a view to building resilience into the delivery of pharmaceutical services. Nanache, during the business session, we will have in-depth discussions on our programs and activities and be charting the next steps forward. I will therefore ask that you grant me the opportunity to give this august gathering some highlights, just a few highlights over the past few years. So with respect to achievements over the last four years, we have completed all lectures and assessments for candidates slated for the period under review. We have admitted candidates who met the set criteria into the fellowship and membership training programs. We are in the final stages of establishing a digital management system for the college. We have, together with our collaborators, run short courses for the following categories. Asthma managers, handling of chemotherapy medications, pharmacists vaccinators programs. We are also undertaking the following training programs with collaboration from our partners by the end of this year. NCD educators, value chain academy program, masters and postgraduate diplomas in supply chain. We undertook monitoring and evaluation visits to residency sites in the following regions, Greater Accra, Ashanti, Central, and Northern. And I'll mention to you why we didn't go to the other regions a bit later. We launched the GCP Journal, 
a peer-reviewed journal designed to disseminate scientific knowledge from healthcare professionals. We have established an online journaling system that allows articles to be received all year round, and this will also facilitate the regular publication of issues and volumes of the journal. We conducted a masterclass series to support the dissemination of research findings and intervention by pharmacists and other scientists. And perhaps our interest, the revised, the revived interest in the scientific session may be a testament of the success of that training. We consistently released statements and conducted webinars to commemorate some World Health Days. We have actively participated in engagements with the ministry and its agencies over the period in review. We have engaged actively with sister colleges at some of these ministry engagement meetings to facilitate collaboration. We have a vibrant website for our fellows, members and candidates, as well as the general public to facilitate the receipt of relevant information on the college and also to share information on scientific developments in pharmacy practice. At the Secretariat, we are continually building the capacity of staff to enable them contribute to the execution of the mandate of the college. We have completed conditions of service for staff and we have also finalized our strategic plan with input from our fellows and other relevant stakeholders. We are collaborating with the College of Health Sciences to provide joint qualifications for candidates, as in membership with MPhil and fellowship with PhD. Nana Chair, the elders say that if we want to go far, we must go with others. And Nana, at the Ghana College of Pharmacists, we want to go far. So we have collaborated with like-minded institutions as we all work toward improving the health of the people of Ghana, the sub-region and beyond. And under your great leadership, when we celebrated our 10th anniversary last year, we recognized the contributions of 31 institutions and 32 individuals for their work towards the establishment and the growth of the college. We also recognize the contributions of those who work quietly in the background and get things done, their own currencies. For some of these heroes, their contributions may not be known, or they may prefer to have them unmentioned. To these unsung heroes, we also dedicated a citation. We have also put the list of institutions we are collaborating with and the facilities that host our residency candidates in our brochure. And I'm sure that all of us have the brochure, whether hard copy or soft copy. But Nana, there are two categories of people I must mention. Our preceptors who give of themselves day in and day out to ensure that the pharmacists and other professionals who go through this college are duly equipped with all the necessary competences to meet international standards. These preceptors are mainly experienced pharmacists, but also include medics, nurses, laboratory scientists, and other members of the healthcare team. Thank you, our venerable preceptors. And the second group is our hardworking staff. Nana, these officers have shown an unwavering commitment to the growth of the college. They are ready to learn and sharpen their skills. They are ready to grow into any new role assigned to them and acquire the relevant skills 
to execute the mandate. They are a team of committed individuals, and it has been a great pleasure to work with them. Please clap for them for me. Thank you. Nana Chair, Deputy Minister, as we rejoice in our successes and celebrate those who have helped us make them possible, I would also like to highlight just a few of the challenges we have been faced with. We still do not have the full complement of staff that is needed in the execution of the mandate of the college. We stay afloat because our staff are working themselves to the bone. Although this shows commitment on their part, we cannot continue this way. It would be a great shame, Nana, Deputy Minister, if the great work taking place at the college were to be deranged because of exhaustion and burnout on the part of the staff. We need help. We also do not have a vehicle for monitoring and visiting training sites. That's one of the reasons we have not been able to visit all our sites. As a specialist training institution, regular visits to training sites afford us the opportunity to ensure that candidates are continually getting the requisite training and that any issues regarding training are identified and dealt with before they become full-blown matters of concern. In the circumstances, we are sometimes forced to use the only old official vehicle of the college for monitoring, making the office handicapped when it comes to the smooth running of activities. Other times, we have had to fall on the magnanimity of some members of the monitoring For how long can we continue this way? Not for SMIs. Another challenge is that all our candidates have to fund their training from their own resources unless they get some financial support from their institutions or other well-intentioned institutions. Pharmacists play a critical role in ensuring rational use of medicines, which has been identified by the Ministry of Health as essential to attaining universal health coverage and has been a major focus for the ministry in recent years. And specialist pharmacists are particularly important if we will be able to provide specialist care to our patients and our clients in our hospitals and in our communities. I would therefore ask that some modalities be put in place to support the funding of training of specialist pharmacists as we strive towards attaining UHC. Thank you. I thought there would be more clubs. Nana Chair, Deputy Minister, now that I have highlighted some achievements and thrown some light on a few of our challenges, let me turn my attention to our nominees for fellowship and our candidates for membership. The nominees for fellowship are pharmacists who have shown commitment to the college and have proven themselves as preceptors, mentors, and teachers of other pharmacists and are continually applying themselves to the growth of the college through advocacy, policy, and dissemination of scientific knowledge. They have also committed themselves to doing all within their power to promote the growth of the college and contribute to the training of specialist pharmacists in Ghana and beyond. They have further pledged to meet their financial obligations to the college year in and year out. <laughs> the candidates for membership have also submitted themselves 
to the stringent training requirements of the college and have been assessed as deserving of the qualification that will be bestowed on them today. They have undertaken research as part of their training and submitted reports on their work. The results of some of which you will be hearing and seeing during oral and poster presentations. When it comes to time to confer the various awards on our um, inductees, please, we will share with you greater detail and I'll urge you to join me to congratulate them now and at that time. Congratulations. So today, let's take time to celebrate and network with one another. Let's assimilate the information that will be shared by our thematic speaker. Let's edify ourselves with the scientific knowledge being shared during the poster and oral presentations. And let's find time and opportunity to congratulate and rejoice with our freshly minted fellows and members. And God willing, later in the day, we will take time to discuss the details of matters affecting the college and come up with strategies to get us further and further along the route of becoming the college of choice we all dream of becoming. For now then, let me once again say welcome to AGM and Scientific Conference 2023. Let's celebrate, learn, and grow together. Thank you. Oh, let's, let's, let's give it up, it up again, again for, for Madam Yvonne Iseku, as, as well as the entire um, Ghana College. I think that um, if you look at the act that establishes it and the various objects of that act and the speech that you just heard, you realize that they are really on course in achieving what um, has been outlined. And um, for this, I think we are all grateful that we are seeing this progress in the college. Um, as the meeting progressed, we actually had um, a very important person join us, our special guest of honor, and that will be um, Honorable Tina Gifty Na Ayele Mensa. I want to just acknowledge her presence at the moment. But then she will actually be introduced properly. Um, in due course, because um, she's also the MP for Wijabawi, and I know that there's no by-elections in that area. <laughs> All right, so we will take um, a speech from the president of the college, uh, Mr. Nyuagbe. Um, Mr. Nyuagbe has been an astute leader in the area of pharmacy regulation in the country, and um, if I remember, he was my regulator, in fact, he, I work with the council at a point, and he would advise you, he would give you guidance, um, and some of us are also growing in our professional careers because of some of the things that he shared with us. Um, he is a product of our own Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, as well as the University of Bradford, UK. Um, he's also a product of GIMPA, our own Ghana of Management and Professional Administration. Mr. Nyogwe has authored several papers in the area of pharmaceutical regulation. Um, he's actually endorsed several books in the area as well. He's an astute leader in the area of regulation in Ghana. If you don't know him, then it means that you are not in the sector. <laughs> so um, he's also a family man, and that one I have to hash that. Um, he has a family with three children and one wife. Um, that. <laughs> On top, On top of, of that, that um, even after his service at the council, he's still useful in the sector, and he's made himself available to us, playing a very critical role in the college and also with the University of Health and Allied Sciences, where he contributes to faculty. I want to welcome Mr. Nyuagwe um, to give us an address. Thank you. Thank you for your kind words.
the Royal Highness Udinu Kwafu Akutu. Our own senior sister, Honorable Tina Mensa, Deputy Minister of Health, who also My own sister is here. She taught me way back. <laughs> she taught a subject, you know, wonder. Uh, she taught us chemistry, I think. Yes, she started being a chemistry lecturer. And those uh, nucleophiles from stereochemistry and whatever. So, <laughs> Madam Thimati Speaker, she's now Professor Frances Thelma Kwabia Uusu Deku. Madam, you are most welcome. <laughs> Members of the governing board or governing council of the Ghana College of Pharmacists, my own rector, Doctor, I'm stressing it, Doctor, Mrs. Yvonne Yurinchua Iseku. I can see Mr. Bembuchi, who is also the immediate past rector and an immediate president of the Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana. And uh, pharmacist lawyer Kwabina Ofei is my vice president of the Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana. I haven't seen the president yet, so let me address him. <laughs> Fellows and members of the Ghana College of Pharmacists, I can cite uh, senior Ted Benascos at the back Senior, you're welcome. welcome. <laughs> yeah. Your Excellencies, faculty members present, distinguished fellows and membership graduates, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, and friends of the media. I'm highly honored to come before you this morning to celebrate our new fellowship and membership graduates. It is also a day that we gather as a family to dedicate members and fellows, sorry, I'll take it again. It is also a day that we gather as a, a family of dedicated members and fellows to showcase our scientific research exploits and address pertinent matters that affect us in the practice of our dear pharmacy profession. This year, our theme is building resilience into the delivery of pharmaceutical services, a theme that resonates deeply with the current state of our profession. Pharmacy, like any other profession, faces its fair share of challenges. However, it is during these challenging times that our resilience is tested, and it is through resilience that we find strength and success. Resilience is more than just the ability to bounce back from setback. It is the capacity to adapt, innovate, and thrive in the face of adversity. Nana Chairman, permit me to share a few reflections, as, as people say, thinking aloud, on some current situation facing pharmacy. Workload of pharmacies in some sectors of the healthcare system is relatively on the rise. The production figure of pharmacies for 2023, I had this figure from the induction ceremony, stands at 628. While there is increased demand for pharmacies in general, pharmacies with competence in some specialized fields of practice, such as drug and vaccine production, quality assurance, social, regulatory, clinical, public health, pharmacoeconomics are either low or lacking. Pharmacies' recruitment and employment appear either unstructured and delayed or delayed. This situation obviously presents pharmacies' workforce demand and supply distortions within the health sector and the manifested implications such as drug procurement distortions, medication errors, and coping with increased complexity of medications due to the introduction of new drugs and discovery of new indications. There is a need to anticipate the growing demand in our practice in areas such as pharmaceutical care, medication therapy management, 
medication reconciliation, drug information services, vaccination services, which the college I'm proud to say that has begun training some pharmacies in this respect. In spite of all these challenges, there is also a good news. Recently, we all heard about the groundbreaking ceremony of taking off of DEK, Vaccines Limited, to produce vaccines locally in Ghana. It is a good news, but it also has pharmacy implications. Nana Chair, as I continue to reflect on the theme, some of the questions that come to mind include, could mental health and its management be prioritized so that pharmacists can develop some more competencies in this area, as well as cope with job stress? Will embracing continuing lifelong learning profile some solution to ever evolving and complexity within the healthcare system? Can the introduction of technology in this rapidly digitalizing world streamline and improve our pharmacy processes so as to provide more services? Can we begin to explore a different advocacy strategy that will end recognition and acceptance of the hugely untapped potentials, roles, and values of our pharmacists. Nana Chairman, resilience is not built in isolation. We cannot remain in our individual corners and continue to work in silos. We can begin to foster stronger collaboration with other healthcare professionals, pharmaceutical companies, and regulatory bodies. By working together, we can share knowledge, leverage resources, and overcome obstacles more effectively. All these reflections I have mentioned about, in my opinion, can become discussion points for constructive engagement that will initiate or shape policy. Our dear graduates, accept my qualification. Congratulations. The college is pleased to see you exuding an abundance of confidence. Be reminded that a number of persons or interested parties have invested in you. Individually, you have also heavily invested in yourself. Expectations, therefore, are about you are, are very high and numerous. Go out there and demonstrate your resilience in pharmacy practice with the competencies acquired or the recognition conferred on you by the Ghana College of Pharmacists. Nana Chair, these thoughtful reflections are some ideas I want to share with this garden. In conclusion, Building resilience requires our unwavering commitment, passion, adaptability, innovation, and determination to anticipate and provide the best possible care for our patients. Thank you, and let us make this year's annual general meeting and scientific conference a fruitful and meaningful one. Thank you, and God bless us all. Thank you very much, Farm Joseph Nagri, for the President's remark. Now, next on the bill is goodwill messages. There is, there is an idiomatic expression that says, ask about your neighbors, then buy the house. It is interesting that any time we have a program here with the college, Professor Richard Adun comes in person to grace the occasion. And this year is no exception. Prof, we are pleased to have you in our midst, and you, you, you will now take the podium to give us your goodwill message. Ladies and gentlemen, kindly welcome Professor Adonu. Chairman of the Governing Council of the Ghana College of Pharmacists and Chairman for the occasion, our Honorable Deputy Minister of Health, President of the Ghana College of Pharmacists, Rector of the College, members of the Governing Council, members of the Academic Board, members and fellows of the College, invited guests, inductees, ladies and gentlemen. It's um, a great honor and pleasure for the Ghana College of Physicians and Surgeons to be asked to grace this um, occasion 
of your um, 2023 Annual General Meeting and Scientific Conference and to be asked to give a goodwill message. The theme for this conference, as we've heard many of the speakers say, is building resilience into the delivery of pharmaceutical services. And resilience is a very important thing, especially in our sub-region, where we are faced with different types of crisis. So it's important for us to talk about that today, to think about it in the days ahead, and to ask ourselves, how can we ensure that high quality pharmaceutical services continue to be delivered in this country, regardless of what, what happens? It's important as we discuss this in this um, scientific conference and annual general meeting, to identify what are the stresses and the stresses that delivery of pharmaceutical services face and how we can adapt to those um, stresses and how we can also overcome those stresses and how we can change those stresses into enabling things that would, would keep us going. And it's also important to think into the future about what are the future stresses or stresses that can come about. I mean, there are, there are many places where they have drills on um, things that are bound to happen. We talk about the commonest we know of are fire drills, which are supposed to happen but almost never happen in this country. It's important for us to think of situations that could happen and ask ourselves, how can we prepare to handle those um, situations? Whilst ending, I would like to um, say that it's important for us as um, a college to also be advocates for the people that we produce. It's, it's good to talk about um, the role of the pharmacist and, and the role of the pharmacist in delivering pharmaceutical services. But I suspect that the Ghana College of um, Pharmacists does more than produce pharmacists. I mean, if at the graduation ceremony at the at KNUST or University of Ghana they talk about the role of pharmacists, I'll be happy about that. But then those pharmacists graduating from KNUST and University of Ghana and any other pharmaceutical, any other pharmacy universities that might come up, must know that they are at a lower level than the people being produced by the Ghana College of Pharmacists. And if you don't say it, who would say it for you? So I'd like to suggest to um, those who come up with the themes for these meetings that bring out the importance of the role of the specialist pharmacist. Otherwise, the country will continue to think that those who are produced by the Ghana College of Pharmacists are the same as the the, those who graduate from our universities, but you are not, and you mustn't allow them to think that way. So with, the, with this, I'd like to wish you, I'd like to wish you fruitful deliberations at the AGM and the scientific program, and it's my hope that Ghana College of Pharmacists will continue to grow from strength to strength and, and, and um, be established in their rightful position in the health service delivery of this country. Thank you. I told you he's a good neighbor. He has just showed us the strategies of conquering others. Please, um, card, card number with registration number, sorry. GR570015. Please, your car light is on, so kindly attend to that. Next on the bill is our very own Farm Kwabna Offer to give us a goodwill message from PSH. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much and good morning, colleagues. So the invitation was to the president of the Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana and he was unable to make it, so he asked me to represent him. So this speech is on his uh, behalf. 
the chairman of the governing board of the Ghana College of Pharmacists, Nana Odenehu Akwafu Akutu the third, the Akwemuhini. You know, I always say that the closest you can get to Nana is where you are right now. Because when he sits in stage, or he is in his regalia, with about three umbrellas above him, with his abrafo shooting guns into the skies, with his sub chiefs around him, and people singing music and drums and all that around, you will run away, to be honest. So anytime that I get a chance to stand close to you, we are very honored, Nana. Thank you very much. The Honorable Tina Mensah, Deputy Minister for Health and MP for Wage Act Bawe. Pharmacist Joseph Noabwe, President of the College, the Registrar that we know, like Brian said, if you don't know him, they haven't been in the system. Director, Pharmacist Dr. Mrs. Yvonne Yurinjua Isiku. And, and give me the, opportunity, the permission to acknowledge, because this is PSGH, former President Ben Boche, I see him is here, former President of the PSGH. And then I also see former President Oscar Bruce, I also see Vice President Doris Atifwa, and everybody else who has served on the governing board of the PSGH before, or SEC, or a fellow of the society, I, I do recognize all of you. We also want to recognize our thematic speaker, Professor Frances Thelma Kwabia Ousu Deku, and the representatives of sister colleges, fellows and members of the Ghana College, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, I bring you greetings and warm felicitations from the leadership and entire membership of the Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana on the 2023 annual general meeting of the Ghana College of Pharmacists. The college was undoubtedly built for us as pharmacists, and for that reason, it is only meet that we partake in, the, in perhaps the biggest gathering of the Ghana College of Pharmacists. The AGM is a time when we come together to have a holistic review of our stance, how we have performed, and how close we are to our set goals. It is a time to take stock of our activities for the past year and discuss matters that strengthen the mandate of the college to produce specialist training in pharmacy. And of course, now we know that the, the people we are supposed to say that, which is superior to those who come from the, from the training institutions, and to promote research in pharmaceutical practice and related disciplines. Due to the increasingly complex role of pharmacists and the enhancement of more patient-facing roles, it is important that as custodians of medicines, Pharmacists utilize their full potential as advanced practitioners. The development and global acceptance of standardized competencies, which the Ghana College seeks to provide, is therefore crucial. The PSGH strongly believes that pharmacy practice in Ghana will advance and can favorably be com com comparable to global standards if the Ghana College of Pharmacists is given the needed support and resources. We at the PSGH will continue to support and contribute our quota to advance the objectives of the college. This year, the PSGH has established scholarships to support pharmacists to enroll in the membership program. Madam was talking about financing, and of course, there's opportunity to do more, but at least we have started. A similar scheme will be, will be rolled out in the coming weeks to support pharmacists to pursue short courses in pharmaceutical production and quality assurance. Thank you. The theme for the 2023 AGM, Building Resilience into the Delivery of Pharmaceutical Services, is very timely and fit for purpose. The COVID-19 pandemic has been a wake-up call for Ghana and the entire SSA region to build resilience into every aspect of our healthcare system. As we emerge out of the pandemic, it is imperative that we refocus our searchlights and learn innovative strategies to strengthen our system to help us survive in the post-COVID-19 economy and prepare for the next pandemic, if at all. It is the conviction of the PSGH and its membership that the college will consider specialization in infectious diseases and vaccinology while producing the needed human resource for local production of vaccines therapeutics and diagnostics manufacturing capacity 
as one of the resources needed to address public health crisis. As fellows and members of the Ghana College of Pharmacists, the PSGH is confident that your deliberations here today will result in proposals and recommendations on the way forward to make the specialist pharmacists a tool for building resilience into the delivery of pharmaceutical services in Ghana. I thank you. Shall we now invite Dr. Susanna Soma from Nurses and Midwives Council? Thank you. Nana Chairman, who also doubles as the um, chairperson of the Governing Council, Honorable Deputy Minister for Health, and President of the Ghana College of Pharmacists, Director, Development Partners, Fellows of the College, Distinguished Guests, and ask the President to say fellow Ghanaians. I bring you warm greetings from the Chairperson of the Governing Council of the Ghana um, actually, I'm from Ghana College of Nurses and Midwives. So I bring you greetings from a chair, a person who, of the governing council, who is also one of your honorable selves, a member of your honorable selves, uh, Mr. Pabna Bankwa Ebua, the president and management of the Ghana College of Nurses and Midwives. The college of pharmacists, like the College of Nurses and Midwives, is pretty young, but promises to be a hub of professional excellence. For pharmacists in Ghana and the sub-region, despite the obvious challenges that come with growing institutions, I call for the courage and perseverance exhibited so far. I wish to congratulate you on the occasion of your annual general meeting. And I must say that you couldn't have chosen a better team than building resilience into the delivery of pharmaceutical services. I say so because the world over, health systems are looking to sending health care to the very doorstep of all quality health service provision. And you would agree with me that to do that, it takes resilience. While you deliberate on this theme, I suggest that you take moments to meditate on a possible collaborative, multidisciplinary approach to pushing this agenda forward. Once again, I wish you all the best in the coming days and sessions. Long live the postgraduate professional colleges. Long live our mother, the Ministry of Health. Long live Ghana. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Soma. Next is um, a rep from College of. West Africa Postgraduate College of um, Pharmacists, in the person of Mr. Samuel Tengrai. Nana uh, Chair, let me also say that this invitation was to the chairperson of the Ghana chapter in the person of Dr. Mrs. Mata Gansa Lutrot. Um, she is not available today, so I have the singular privilege to represent her and read his speech, probably an extension of the president's speech. Nana, please allow me to stand on the protocol established and proceed. Greetings from 
West African Postgraduate College of Pharmacists, Secretariat in Lagos, and then also the Ghana chapter. Nana Chair, the theme, building resilience into the delivery of pharmaceutical services would obviously through the searchlight on systems for building and improving access and assuring quality of services. Such areas as improving governance, capacity building, pharmaceutical sector informatics, financing strategies, mechanisms to improve access to medicines and enhancing quality pharmaceutical services could be rightly engaging this AGM. It is, however, of critical importance to encourage our colleagues, especially the younger professionals, to be mindful of the wider industry trends and the pharmacy's evolving role. As a matter of building your own professional resilience, regardless of how institutions of which you are part may respond the disruptions in the macro environment, I urge pharmacists to continually address themselves to the question, how will the future of pharmacy take shape as innovations in life sciences and new technologies disrupt the healthcare value chain, consumers are increasingly focused on well-being, demanding greater healthcare access, convenience, and customized products. In this environment, exciting opportunities emerge for pharmacies to evolve and expand their role. Uh, she is writing like a, a marketer, and the focus is on the young ones. Um, uh, develop your own uh, professional opportunities. That is what she is. Um, add that um, some of the faculties, uh, like my own, social and administrative, and then uh, public health, especially social and administrative. Um, those who enroll want to get into the faculties and the disciplines where opportunities already exist. My chairperson is saying that you can create your own advantage. Nana Chair, to really appreciate the emerging trends in the sector, it is important to begin with the consumer and think about how their health care journey changes. As technology becomes ubiquitous and integrated, the role of pharmacy and pharmacists evolves into one that may not even be recognized by yesterday's standards. The experts see a convergence of health and wellness along with an expanded role of telehealth and then virtual healthcare. This should create opportunities for pharmacies to evolve and expand their role, perhaps even to become the next generation of primary care providers, primary care providers who treat patients with acute illnesses and manage chronic conditions like diabetes, hypertension, and asthma. It's already happening. And uh, our front line in the provision of preventive vaccination. Nana, in today's healthcare ecosystem, the pharmacist is a trusted, critical, and often underutilized resource. As for hospital service delivery, increases its use of enabling technologies, pharmacists may find themselves at a professional crossroads, either grow their roles, scope, and value, or face potential disinter 
mediation. And that is a real uh, concern or something that we should take into account, especially the young ones. The pharmacists of the future may need to specialize in digital, medical and behavioral sciences and technologies if they are to be re relevant. This is good news, not only for clinical and community pharmacy practice, but also for social and public health pharmacy, which focuses to a large extent on dealing with psychosocial determinants of health. In this direction, the Ghana chapter of the West African Postgrad College of Pharmacists pledges its continual support to the Ghana College of Pharmacists in facilitating the specialist training of our pharmacists to acquire the right professional skills and competencies, as well as the qualifications required by a resilient pharmaceutical service delivery system. On this note, Nana Chair, we of the WAPCP wish you a very fruitful AGM and look forward to sharing in outcomes that will impact our shared futures positively. Thank you. It's actually heartwarming to hear all these uh, messages from sister colleges and so on. And I think that when you are in the house and then you hear such good messages, it's only natural that in our culture, you turn on some music and then you hear something from the African rhythms. I've seen some uh, percussion instruments. We want to just listen to that, take an interlude, and then we'll come back as to continue what we are doing. And that will be cultural group.
Ada podam. I am interested in seeing the inventors of these dances, and it's clear that if you embed this in your culture, um, there will be no NCDs <laughs> within your bloodlines. But um, it's quite energetic, and um, we appreciate that. You can give it up again for them. It is free. It is free cultural troupe. So next on the bill, we have um, the president of the college to actually induct fellows. And um, I would like to call on him, we've introduced him already, Fab Nyuagwe, to do that for us. Let's appreciate him as he comes. Yeah. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the very important aspect of today's program. We have two categories of inductees. Inductees into the fellowship and then inductees that will be accepted as members. And um, the mandate handed under the Specialist Health Training and Plant Medicine Research Act 2011, Act 833, mandates the college to organize specialist programs, continuous education programs, and award diplomas and certificates. In the same way, then, the council is also mandated to accept members and fellows into the college. Having, the, having given you this background, as I have already said, we have two categories. The first category is the fellowship. And uh, these people are conferred fellowship by election. They didn't go through the coursework but they went through a very stringent objective criteria right from the fact there are various faculty levels and uh, they have proven beyond all reasonable doubt that they are competent and capable pharmacists who have to be conferred fellows. Nana Chair, on this note, I now have the singular honor to present to you the following nominated fellows who have fulfilled the requirements to be admitted as fellows of the Ghana College of Pharmacists. Pharmacist Samuel Amabin Kunto. Pharmacist Dr. Grace Atta Ajipon, Pharmacist Isaac Kweku Ubriyebua, Pharmacist Dr. Imos Adapalala Bugri, Pharmacist Dr. Salifu Ala Santia, Pharmacist Kweku Safu, Pharmacist Dr. Frimpoma Nelson, Pharmacist Jennifer Jetrude. Lai, Pharmacist Dr. Yvonne Ayongo Edubuahin, Pharmacist Olivia Ejekumwa Boatin, and last but not the least in this category, Pharmacist Dr. Collins Wuto. The Nana Chair present to you these nominated fellows for you to the oath.
sesuai. Thank you. Congratulations to our new members. Um, say this oath after me. I accept to be a member of the Moses. Hey, the fellows. I'm reading. Really Okay, this one's for us. Again. I be a fellow of the Ghana College of Pharmacists. Bow to serve humanity and to support. The professional idea commitment guided by the highest standards of human conduct. Support the advancement of knowledge and standards of practice in pharmacy. of my present and future. I use all opportunities to develop practice practice with all healthcare professional environment. In taking this solemn oath, I commit myself in a manner con vows have helped supported my development as a pharmacist. So help me God. Congratulations. Let me just introduce the Danny Second leg of presentation of oh, This is in the membership to the college. These fully gone through the prescribed course, done their residency, and passed the prescribed examination courses. In addition, fully completed and presentation on off. May I now active of the various faculty to come forward? They are candidates. Let him come. We are starting. Highness 
I didn't hope to the third. Honorable Dick, all put respectfully. Dr. Okubwatin, the Faculty of Clinical, presents to you the following resident requirements fitted as members of the Ghana College of and as I mentioned, you ice your feet. Master Superintendent Dr. Kabi for Adekum. The Pretendant of the Police, Dr. Janet Donko. Pharmacist Abanasco. Mahama. Of policemen here with Father and Smiley Hahama. DSP Benefit. Pharmacist Ku Ajiman. God Fred, thank you. Nanache, all protocols. protocols. Uh, Professor, question. I mean, quality and medicine development and production present to you residents who are to be admitted to the Ghana College and their senior name. Farmers, two. And the pharmacist, I do. Thank you. 
Das ist mein Witz. Now you see this. To be a member of a college of farmer. To serve him. Professional commitments. Standard of advancement. Knowledge and stuff. Pharmacy to present and future. All opportunity to do collaborative or professional. I'm taking this of never to mana to vow supported developed pharmacists. So have uh, to induct. Let me do that. Let me. Action. Now me have. God. Taking the oath, I now you as member of the College of now the privilege of using the title member H of Totten Read E. Let me know. This one. God wants. Having taken this oath, I now formally admit you as fellows of the Dana College of Pharmacists. You now have the privilege of using as your title, Fellow Ghana College of Pharmacists. This may be shortened to read FJC Farm. Congratulations. Let me also add my voice to congratulate all of you for this achievement. Congratulations. And then you may now swing the tassel from right to left. <laughs> Thank you. Shall we, once again, congratulations to the inductees. Shall we invite the Chichu culture to, but before, but before they come, um, the high. Okay, then please come. You may now display. The floor is all yours. Thank you.
thank you once again, um, Etitri uh, Drama, Etitri Cultural Troop. Um, next on the bill, and considering the theme for the annual 2023 annual general meeting and scientific conference, that is building resilience into the delivery of pharmaceutical services, um, I would like to introduce the thematic speak speaker. Um, she is a product of KNUST, our own beloved Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. Um, I think the date is significant and I would mention it. That was in 1978. Um, she actually mastered in pharmaceutical chemistry also in 1982. And if I look around, um, if you are not up to 40 years, it means that by the time she was mastering pharmaceutical chemistry, Brosen Lowry theories and Lewis acid based structures, um, you would still be a cell. <laughs> well, she managed to move into social pharmacy, where she became um, Ghana's first associate and full professor in social pharmacy, and then also the first female pharmacy professor in this country. She has retired and um, her faculties are still working and she is still supporting the department, um, I mean supporting all the various things that we do and because of that you see her here today as well. Um, while in active service, she headed two departments, the pharmaceutical chemistry department as well as the clinical and social pharmacy department. She actually rose to be a vice dean in the faculty of pharmacy and within the larger KNUST um, um, governance framework, she actually served on several boards and committees. She has a passion for young people, and we have seen that in her roles around um, several initiatives within the Protestant chaplaincy that had to deal with children. And then she also has supported the Ghana Fellowship of Evangelical Students, Gaffes, and then she has actually um, done a lot of work with the Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana, um, also supporting LAPAC, and with her accolades, I'm sure that LAPAC will be excited um, that we have one of a kind also amongst us. Even while on sabbatical, she also offered her skills and experience to support the Christian Service University of Ghana, which is a private um, Christian university uh, in Kumasi. Um, within the global space, she has authored several articles and several publications in peer-reviewed journals, uh, written book chapters, um, spoken at several conferences. In fact, in a nutshell, um, Professor Francis Ousudeku is a subject matter expert and an authority when it comes to social pharmacy and how we bring all the pharmacy to uh, the society. Um, for somebody who has actually transferred from the lone pairs into bringing the pharmacy to meet human beings and bringing the pharmacy into the social space, I think she's the best person to speak on this subject matter. I would like to welcome with all honor our thematic speak speaker for today, Professor Mrs. Ousudeku, who also taught me. Thank you, Ems. Thank you for the introduction. And thank you, Ghana College of Pharmacists, for this opportunity to share with you my experiences and my thoughts. Nanache, I believe that with my gray hair, you will pardon me if I do not mention everybody here present in their capacities. I would want to say this distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Building resilience 
into the delivery of pharmaceutical services. When I got, I first got the message, I thought, well, okay. Then I went into it and I thought, oh God, maybe I shouldn't have accepted to speak. Maybe there are more competent people who would do a better job. And I want to thank the Ghana College of Pharmacists for this opportunity for me to also grow and learn as I did uh, go into the preparation of this speech. And as an academic, I would want us to look at the key words in this theme. So we'll be looking at delivery, we'll be looking at pharmaceutical services, we'll be looking at resilience. Resilience is, is a word that uh, we can say is so hydra-headed, and its definition is probably akin to defining happiness. So we look at resilience of systems, especially health systems, resilience of associations and then the resilience of the human beings who make up those systems and associations. Then we'll look at how to build resilience. But I'm not here to give you the answers. I'm just here to point you to principles that you can use to get the answers for yourself. And then we'll try and conclude. So what is the living? We all know delivery. But looking into the dictionary, you see that there are probably uh, three aspects to delivery. Act of transferring to another, act of giving up, and act of giving birth. And so I put it all together and I said that it is the carrying and turning over of something. But what is that something? And who does the delivery? So I thought that there should be some prerequisites for delivery. First, you must know what to deliver. And you must have it in the right, in the first place, or you must know where to get it. Because if you don't know what to give, how will you know when you have it? And how will you know when something has happened to it? So as pharmacists, we don't know what we are delivering. Where are we heading towards? Pharmaceutical services. And I found this definition for community pharmacy. It is only for community pharmacy. But I believe that we can apply it to all the various aspects of pharmacy. It's an action or set of actions undertaken in or organized by a pharmacy delivered by pharmacists or other health pr practitioners who apply their specialized health knowledge personally or via an intermediary with the patient or client population or other health professional to optimize the process of care with the aim to improve health outcomes and the value of health care. How do we as pharmacists the value of health care. Who are the drivers of these pharmaceutical services? And I just put it, uh, looked at just two aspects, the regulatory aspect and then the ethical aspect. Of course, there are the training institutions, the Ghana College of Pharmacists, the various uh, pharmacy uh, training schools. So if we look at the regulatory or the legal aspects, it is the pharmacy council. And then we can group everybody else then into the ethical aspects. And the, I would say that the umbrella body is the Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana. And just like the rector of this um, college, I was also once the vice president of the Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana. There are others, associations of pharmacy technicians, would we add uh, MCAs, would we add over-the-counter medicine sellers, because they are also included in the act. So I ask myself, 
yourself, what is the face of pharmacy in Ghana? Is it government and hospital pharmacy? Is it community pharmacy? Is it industrial pharmacy? Is it those who represent ethical pharmaceutical industries? Is it academic and social pharmacy? Is it regulatory pharmacy? Is it e-pharmacy? What, what is the face of pharmacy in Ghana? You agree with me that it is varied and diverse. And the Ghana College of Pharmacy fits into all of these. And therefore, we can make an impact wherever we are. So who does the delivery? Pharmacists, and then their support staff, pharmacy technicians, MCAs, frontline staff. I put them there because they are very uh, instrumental in what happens or the, the, the uh, face that uh, any office gives to uh, their, their clients. So the frontline staff. But ultimately, the pharmacist is the responsible person. And therefore, I want to concentrate on us. I, I asked my fourth year students uh, a week, some weeks ago, who is the pharmacist? And they were sitting there looking at me. And so I said, what are you training to be? What is it that you want to be? And I literally had to pry it out of them. Maybe they were shy, or maybe they, they, they really had thought through who were pharmacists. So, 2016, FIP said, a pharmacist is a scientifically trained graduate healthcare professional who is an expert in all aspects of the supply and use of medicines. Pharmacists assure access to safe, cost-effective, and quality medicines and their responsible use by individual patients and healthcare systems. Then I went on to resilience. What is resilience? One dictionary, the Google dictionary says, the capacity to withstand or to recover quickly from difficulties. It is toughness. It's also the ability of a substance or object to spring back into shape. So you have words like elasticity, you have liability, you have plasticity, flexibility, to all defining resistance. And the Merriam-Webster dictionary says that it is the cap capability of a strained body to recover its size and shape after deformation caused especially by compressive stress. So there's some sort of uh, pressure in uh, the definition of resilience. In what context is it used? use many disciplines. But the trend that runs through all the definitions is the concept of bouncing back after a shock. Because resilience has its root meaning from the Latin word resilient, which means to bounce back. And in addition, it is used in reference to both systems and people. So, what is organizational resilience? There are so many um, definitions. One says that it is the ability to keep or recover a steady state, thereby allowing that organization to continue normal operations after a disruptive event or in the presence of continuous stress. It is also the ability of an organization to absorb strain and the key word I want us to um, stress on is improve functioning despite the presence of adversity. The European Commission in 2014 said that it is uh, a resilient organization is able to adapt effectively to changing environments and tackle significant challenges with limited resources and recovery is often considered a critical part 
of resilience. I went on to look at health systems resilience. And one definition says that it is the capacity of health actors, institutions, and populations to prepare for and effectively respond to crises, maintain core functions when a crisis hits, and informed by lessons learned during the crisis, reorganize if conditions require it. Another said it is the capacity to adapt, absorb, and transform when exposed to a shock such as a pandemic, natural disaster, armed conflict, financial crisis, and still retain the same control over its structures and functions. Another one says that it is the capacity to absorb internal and external shocks and maintain functional health institutions while sustaining achievements. The one that I like most is that resilience is about everyday resilience, not simply response to sudden shocks. It is health system software, not only its hardware, and it is creative adaptation and transformation rather than simply bouncing back. Because the root cause for resilience is to bounce back, but it goes further. So what or who makes up the health system? People. People make up the health system. We may have the structures, we may have all the systems laid down, but if the people do not drive that, then we are in trouble. So I looked at people resilience. And the American Psychological Association defines it as the process and outcome of successfully adapting to difficult, challenging life experiences, especially through mental, emotional, and behavioral flexibility and adjustment to external and internal demands. So, how do people build resilience? Because we say that people are the building blocks of every system, every association, every uh, setup. So Mayo Clinic says, get connected. And as I listened to the various addresses, you know, I felt, I felt good that I had this as the first point, get connected. We need to get connected. We need to collaborate. And it says, make every day meaningful. Don't think that nothing matters. We are waiting for the big break. Let us make every day meaningful. Let us learn from our experience. Let us remain hopeful. My father was a pharmacist many years ago. And when I look at pharmacy then, and he, when I was young, he used to take me to pharmaceutical society conferences and all that. So I, I, I was associated with pharmacy even before I studied pharmacy. And invariably, oh, I would say that, um, interestingly, I didn't want to be a pharmacist then. But I became, because I didn't want people to say that uh, because your father was a pharmacist, you are also a pharmacist. But I, I grew to love pharmacy. And so we should learn from experience. And when I look at what pharmacy was that time, if we had not remained hopeful, we would not be where we are today and be striving for even greater heights. And the last one was take care of yourself. So, primarily, we can say that when a system's people are resilient, then the system ought to be resilient. How can we adapt this building resilience to delivery of pharmaceutical services? You must remember that systems that deliver health services are not static. 
They are what are known as CAS, Complex Adaptive Systems, just like people. And they should not merely bounce back to the original state after some compressive force, but they should grow after bouncing back. That is the key thing. We ought to grow after bouncing back. And my thoughts went on to Christianity. How did it spread in the early years? It was because the early Christians were persecuted. They, they, they faced some compressive force. And what was their reaction? Some went underground, but they stuck with their ideals. Some scattered and they spread the word. Some went on the offensive and confronted the status quo. I believe that we can use all these three strategies to be able to build resilience into the delivery of pharmaceutical services in Ghana. Therefore, I want to take your mind back to uh, the definition of resilience that is about everyday resilience, not simply response to sudden shocks. If we do not cultivate that everyday resilience, when the sudden shocks come, we will not be able to uh, accommodate it. And then it is also about health system software, not just the hardware having the computers, having the instruments. If we do not have the software that go with that, we, we, we are just wasting the taxpayers' money. It is also creative adaptation and transformation rather than simply bouncing back. And this definition calls for employing soft skills. When I was coming, I asked the colleague, what do you think about this subject? And she said, I don't want to emphasize soft skills. Uh, the, the, the products are there, but they are not connecting with other healthcare professionals. They have the knowledge, but they are not applying their skills. They are isolated. They are, they are in one place. Please uh, emphasize that they need to employ their soft skills. And she told me the story of a medical officer who was lamenting that the number of pharmacists have gone, uh, are being reduced in her department. And uh, she's not happy because when the pharmacists were there, those who were proactive, you know, really uh, uh, made their work easier. They could leave things in their hands and they would make the suggestions and all that. But now that there are so few of them, the other people, the other pharmacists, staff, they, they are just there, you know, they, they, they are not proactive. So please emphasize that they need to get connected. They need to use their skills. They need to employ everyday soft skills. So when we look at our working definition, says that it is everyday resilience, not simply response to sudden shocks. And that would emerge from a combination of absorptive, adaptive, and transformative strategies. When um, the rector was talking, she said, how long can we absorb this? And I thought, yes, that's the first phase. When there's pressure, we want to absorb it, but we cannot always absorb it. And if we cannot absorb, absorb, then we need to adapt. And even as we adapt, we need to transform. So uh, people in um, developing countries like us have to grapple with day-to-day -day chronic challenges, like changes in governance systems, when the government changes, the top changes and uh, they bring their own idea. Payment delays, abrupt and imposed policy directives. How do we deal with that? But those are everyday things. We are not thinking COVID-19 now. Every day. If we are able to deal with everyday challenges, then when the COVID-19 comes, 
then we are able to tackle them also. So let's look at some everyday challenges. I just thought I would um, draw your minds to a few, just a few. Too many pharmacists for too few positions. Even though uh, when you look at WHO um, ratio of pharmacists to population, we are far below that. So do we say that, well, then we, if there are too many, too few positions, should we really take the initiative? We are the faculty, we are, we are, we are complaining. We say, I, I mean, you, you teach a class and you don't know the people in it. So do we do that? Do we restrict the number of pharmacy students? Or do we create more positions for pharmacists? And in creating those positions, who pays? Who employs them? That's something for us to think about. Then, this morning, my children put something on a, a family page, uh, interpret some prescription, and it was very funny. I wish I had given, uh, been able to capture it here. So it, it looked like a minor issue. It looked like a minor issue, but if prescriptions are not properly interpreted, because of bad handwriting, what happens to the delivery of pharmaceutical services to the patient? How will the patient benefit from what we are giving them? So, I believe that in the past we just absorbed it. Uh, you look at it. Uh, we don't have this one here because you can't you can't interpret it. You don't know what it is. Do we adapt? Have we tried to adapt? Uh, if um, the, 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 the contact is there on the prescription, you know we try to call, but it is not always like that. How are we transforming? Creative. Have we looked at this? and seeing its impact on the patient getting our pharmaceutical services. And it is not only prescribers whose handwriting are terrible. Sometimes pharmacists, our, hand, we, we, our handwritings are terrible also. We follow the prescribers. So those are two examples that I have put down. Now, looking at health system software, not only it's hardware. Say that hardware without the requisites, renewing software is simply a white elephant. You cannot make use of the, 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 the hardware that you have because the software is outdated, the software is outmoded, the software is maybe not even appropriate to our uh, environment. So investments must be made in acquiring and maintaining appropriate software tailored to our needs. The third aspect to that definition is creative adaptation and transformation rather than simply bouncing back. I've talked about the positions versus the jobs. We have done some and uh, thanks to the, the efforts of our uh, rector, pharmacists are now seen as part of vaccination teams. It is something that we have transformed into, and I believe that it will help deliver, deliver pharmaceutical services to the people who need the most, the clients. What about a formal dialogue with prescribers on prescription writing? Maybe we need to do that. There's also the PSDH initiative of having standardized charges for services rendered in community pharmacies. I hope that we can carry it through and that it will be an everyday part of community pharmacy. 
there are other um, issues that need to be tackled in other areas of farms. So, in conclusion, I would say that resilience takes time and strength to build. It takes time. We must be uh, patient, but also always forging ahead. And it depends on personal behaviors and skills, like self-esteem and communication skills, as well as external things like social support and the resources available to us. But we cannot always blame uh, limited resources and say that we will you know, just sit back. If we are not resilient, we will not grow. And if something does not grow, it does. So remember that we need to get connected, we need to make every day meaningful, we need to learn from experience, we need to remain hopeful, and also to take care of ourselves, even as we remain a friend of the human race. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so, so much, much um, um, to our thematic speaker. speaker. And, and um, at, at this point, point I, I think that, that um, following the presentation, presentation um, she, she actually, actually borrowed from, from things, things that, that we know from our routine daily lives to drive the message home. home. And, and then, then she actually, actually draws on the models, models of complex, complex adaptive systems, systems how that applies to our profession. She did connection, interconnection with how we would absorb in some instances, adapt in some instances. She challenged us on how we would transform. Uh, uh, cultural cultural troop. Troop. Now, now, so she challenged us on how we we'll transform, we'll transform through creative, creative transformation, transformation and, and then she, she actually did a clear distinction between what the hardware, hardware issues are in terms of having um, our, our job schedules well structured in terms of a position versus a job and then structuring some formal dialogues um, on the issue of prescription writing as well as um, structurally looking at how our services or charges for services would be integrated into the things that we do. Um, clear distinctions between the soft issues and the hard issues that we have to deal with as we continue um, our quest to be a friend of the human race. I want us to give a second round of applause for our thematic speaker. Um, she has indicated that if we have any um, feedback or responses, she would readily take maybe up to three, and then we progress with the program. If there are, if there are no. Yes, so we'll take a few um, responses, um, clarifications, if there are, 
else we progress to the next item and the next speaker on the bill. All right, so I'll hand over to my co-MC to do the introduction of our special guest of honor. Thank you very much, Brian Asari. The next person is the special guest of honor, who, who, who is in the capacity of... The next is Deputy Minister of Health, Honorable Tina Mensa. She is the MP for Wejagbawe constituency, and she has a BSc in Public Administration from Gimpa, and a Master's in International Relations and diplomacy. She is happily married with three children and a Christian by faith. She is a fellow Agusan, if you care to know. She is an old girl of Accra Girls Secondary School, and I'm a proud one too. She likes to describe herself as a Jamestown girl. If you know what that means, then kindly join me. Welcome, Honorable Tina Mesa, onto the video. <laughs> Thank you very much, fellow Agushin. <laughs> yeah. Nana, Chair, first and foremost, I'd like to apologize for walking in a little late. It's because I couldn't get the time right. And I was downstairs, I didn't know it was happening here. And so before somebody came and directed me here, so I apologize for working in late. Nana Chairman of the Governing Council of Ghana College of Pharmacists, Odinoho, Kwafu Akuto Ohene, Omahene of Kwemu, President of the College, Pharma Joseph Nyangbe. Did I get it right? Thank you. <laughs> Rector Pharma Yvonne. Yerinchua Isiku, past and present members of council, head of divisions and faculties, fellows and members of the, of the college, members of the press, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. I bring you greetings from the Honorable Minister for Health, and I'm happy to join you for your annual general meeting and scientific conference. Your theme, building resilience into the delivery of pharmaceutical services, is indeed appropriate for the time in which we find ourselves. It shows that you are aware of the current needs of our healthcare system, and it has become clear of the last several years that if we will be able to attain our goal of universal health coverage, we need a strong and resilient pharmaceutical health delivery system. The Ghana College of Pharmacists, through its training of specialist pharmacists, is contributing to developing essential workforce for delivery of specialist health care to all persons in Ghana. These specialists will be part of the health care teams that provide specialist care to our patients and clients. As we roll out our network, out our network of practice program, we will be seeking to get all persons in Ghana access to specialist care, and that includes pharma uh, specialist pharmaceutical care. However, I understand that pharmaceutical services, including all activities along the pharmaceutical value chain, and not only providing care to the patient, that's, that starts right from the point of production all the way to when the patient gets the correct medicine for the condition that needs to be taken care of. This is why I'm particularly happy with the short course you are introducing as a college for qualified persons for drug production and quality assurance. I am reliably informed that this will equip graduates with the requisite skills to be able and ensure that products from the pharmaceutical manufacturing lines meet the requirements of our very Agile FDA, without us always importing the needed skills from other countries. I think this move by the college is worthy of commendation and it will ensure that we have the 
appropriately trained personnel in the country, thereby contributing to the resilience of our, our pharmaceutical sector. Nana Che, last year, the Ministry of Health signed guidelines for vaccination against COVID-19 and other vaccination, uh, vaccine preventable diseases and community with any community pharmacies. These guidelines were launched under the direct direction of the sector minister to ensure that appropriately trained pharmacists will be certified to provide vaccination services from duly accredited community pharmacists. During the launch of the guidelines, duly trained pharmacists were graduated, graduated and outdoor showing the readiness of community pharmacists in contributing on another level to the management of disease of public health concern. The launch also shows clearly that if the various agencies collaborate, they will provide synergistic results. This success story was a result of collaboration among Ghana Health Service, Pharmacy Council and Ghana College of Pharmacies. I believe this has become possible because the college keeps establishing and building on collaborative engagements in the pursuit of the ex execution of its mandate of training top-notch specialists in pharmacy and related disciplines. I must say that I am aware of the challenges faced by the College of Pharmacists when it comes to resources. We all know that the, we all know the economic challenges that the country has faced during and post-COVID. I am happy to say that as the economic situation, economic situation is resolved, it becomes clear, it becomes easier to allocate resources. The Ghana College of Pharmacists will not be left out. We at the ministry will ensure that within the constraint that we all have to deal with, the college will receive the requisite support. Nanache, ladies and gentlemen, I will now turn my attention to the newly indicted fellows and members. As new indictees, you have just been admitted as members and fellows of the Ghana College of Pharmacists, and this is a recognition of your knowledge and competences. By this induction, you are able to show to the world, to the whole world, that you are competent to work as specialist, senior specialist, and consultant pharmacist. However, this recognition also goes, places a responsibility on you to use your services to build a strong and resilient pharmaceutical workforce. You must take advantage of every opportunity to ensure that you seek the best for your patients and your clients. As you continue this way, you will become a strong ambassador for the college and bring honor to your profession and your country. Nana Chair, as we deliberate on matters relating to building resilience into the delivery of pharmaceutical services, I wish to take this advantage to congratulate the college, board, and management on the strides you have made in the face of numerous challenges and assure you of the continued support of the ministry in the execution of your mandate. Congratulations and all the best. Thank you. Oh, let's give it up again for the Honorable Deputy Minister of Health. And if the drums are supposed to clap as well, you can actually do it better. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, all too soon, we are drawing down the curtain on the first part of the event. Um, there are other activities for the day. There's a scientific session and then a business session to follow. So, um, especially the scientific session, we know it's an innovation that has been added to the AGM. And I think it's a brilliant one. And then we keep the fire burning as we advance the course of pharmacy. Um, at this point, I would want to call on the chair. Okay. But before that, we'll just take a short... Um, message, message from, from Dr. Dr. Mrs. Uh, Yvonne Seku. Then after that, the chair will come.
Thank you very much. Nana Chair, Honorable Deputy Minister, Mr. President, our thematic speaker, council members, um, invited guests. I'm just asking for two minutes to say a big thank you to Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana for their support for the Ghana College of Pharmacists. I, I think as the Vice President said, if you can, please come forward. Uh, right now you are representing the whole of Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana, yes. As the Vice President said, we had expected the President to be here, but at the very short notice he wasn't, he wasn't able to come and so he asked his Vice President to be here. And we want to say a big thank you to Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana for what the society is doing to support the college. The society, through the endowment fund, has, is supporting the college to establish an online management system. I mentioned it in my speech, and I just wanted that to come out. Again, as the Vice President told us, the society has established a scholarship scheme to support some pharmacists. Hopefully, in the next few years, it will be sufficient to support all pharmacists who want to come to the Ghana College of Pharmacists. Oh, please clap for us. In, in, in faith, in faith. And also, as the Deputy Minister mentioned in her speech, the um, college is rolling out the Qualified Person Program and the society has committed to supporting some pharmacists to undertake that, that training. Thank you. And so, with that, I, we, we just had to say a big thank you uh, na, Nana is a so uh, it's a very difficult um, thing to do. But perhaps when we finish, we can take one picture which you can put uh, at the Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana. You and Nana just saying thank you to us. Your one opportunity to stand next, right next to Odenahu. Yes. Thank you very much. And please send our gratitude to the whole of Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana, of which most of us here are a part, but from Ghana College of Pharmacists to Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana. And we are looking forward to more and more and more of such innovations. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So I just wanted to clarify one thing. You know the... PHJ has, has an endowment fund for the college, college which we use to support it. That is where the money was used to support the online part. But that is not where we are taking the money to, to, for the scholarship. So we are not depleting the resources of the fund for the colleges. It's another from another source to support it. So just wanted to clarify that. I think, I think that, that clarification, clarification was also was very important. important. <laughs> <laughs> All right, on that note, we want to take the chairs closing remarks. Thank you, Mr. MC. The Honorable Deputy Minister, um, members on a high table. I don't say all other protocols observed. I am sure you will agree with me that we have had a very educative and exciting opening ceremony today. While I will not attempt to summarize any of the speeches we have heard so far, I will, I will emphasize point that specialist pharmacists are critical to ensure that 
There is resilience in the delivery of pharmaceutical services. And as we all know by now, resilience is the critical is critical if we are to attain universal health coverage and keep our population in health beyond the year 2030. We have heard from our thematic speaker, our deputy minister, and other solidarity messages. Our new fellows and members have pledged to contribute to the development of the college, and we believe them. Now it is time for us all to put our efforts together to build our college better. As we participate in the scientific and business sections, I will urge that we all come ready to learn and share. And let's leave here ready to build resilience into the delivery of pharmaceutical services. I would like to remind the college fellows, members of the college and to emphasize on what the representative from the College of Surgeons and said, I heard you well. He said we should remember to stress the difference between graduate pharmacists produced by the universities and the specialist pharmacists produced by the Ghana College of Pharmacists. That is very, very important. Let us remember, you are specialists and you are above all. Thank you very much. So on those closing remarks, um, we want to call on Farm Beta Araba Benasco. Um, we have a few thanks for all those who made this a success, and then she will do the as the honest. Nana Che. Ordinary home kwa fo akoto the third. A guest of honor, honorable Tina Gifty na ayele mensa. The president of the Ghana College of Pharmacists, Farm Joseph Nuabe. A honored thematic speaker, Professor. Mrs. Francis Delma Osudeku, our rector, fellows, members, fellow graduates, the media present, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon, or good morning, sorry. I am indeed honored to be called upon to give a vote of thanks on behalf of the graduates during this occasion. I would like to get, begin with a quote from Alfred North Whitehead, and I quote, no one who achieves success does so without the help of others. The wise and the confident acknowledge this help with gratitude. And it is God's will for us to give thanks in all circumstances, as we see in the scripture, 1 Thessalonians 5.18. First of all, I will give thanks to Almighty God for making this occasion a success by giving us a good weather. We are in the rainy season, and every now and then it rains, and it thwarts our plans, but he's been very faithful. And I also want to say thank you to God for bringing us this far. It hasn't been an easy journey. 
Nana Chair, ladies and gentlemen, this event did not happen overnight. Wheels started rolling about a week or more, and it required planning and an, an eagle's eye for details. We have been fortunate enough to be supported by a team of motivated and dedicated staff who from of the college who have worked tirelessly to make this event you know a success shall we clap for them first of all on behalf of the grad ones i would like to extend my heart, heartfelt gratitude to nana chair you know for your for your wisdom in sharing this occasion. We are always blessed to have you in our events to share our programs. And may God continue to endow you with more wisdom and long life. Nana Nyami Shrao, onto Wumpandem. Our immense gratitude also goes to our special guest of honor. Honorable Tina Giftina Ayele Mensa for taking time off your busy schedule. We know you are a very busy woman and we are very grateful for taking time off your busy schedule to grace our occasion. Thank you very much. To our thematic speaker, Professor Francis Ousudekun, thank you so much for your insightful speech impressing upon us how to build resilience into the delivery of pharmaceutical services. And I'm taking home with me how to be able to do that, to bounce back and then grow. Thank you very much. To our dynamic rector, Farm Yvonne Yirenchua Eseku, Mom, words cannot express, you know, our gratitude to you for your awesome leadership. Nelson Mandela once said, and I quote, education is the most powerful weapon we can use to change the world. Under your leadership, mom, the college has equipped us with knowledge and expertise which we would which would go a long way in helping us to make an impact in our profession the education we have acquired through the college has made us critical thinkers and to change the accepted way of pharmacy practice and to take it higher thank you mom for your dedication for your sacrifice and may god richly bless you You are a constant motivator and a guiding force in all our endeavors to excel in our field. I would also take this opportunity to place on record a hearty thanks to the heads of faculty of the college for your utmost support and guidance you have extended to all of us. Not forgetting our dedicated and committed preceptors. On behalf of my colleagues, permit me to mention a few from the institution I did my residency. Dr. Daniel Ankra, Dr. Opoku Bwating, as we affectionately call her, Auntie Docas, Dr. Ama Nkansa, Auntie Ama, Uncle Steve, Stephen Kokwe, Dr. Frimpoma Nelson, Dr. Sulias Bruce, who, is, who, who was my supervisor. And I really say a big thank you. She's been a big sister to me. And she was always there, you know, guiding me. Dr. Justice Dobby. And for those who I couldn't mention their names, I did my um, internship after school after um, KNUSD at Kolebu. And 
These people I mentioned were the ones who helped me and trained me, you know, and I passed my licensure examination. And they are still giving their best. Shall we give them a hand of applause? I am going to learn from their exemplary lifestyle, you know, to sacrifice and to give to training and uh, pharmacy students to know more about the profession. Not forgetting our class rep, Lawrence Micah Amwa. Thank you for your awesome leadership. I know we have been a thorn of flesh, <laughs> you know, to you. We have been backing you. And anytime we are agitated and, you know, we go on the platform bashing him and all that, he settles the situation calmly. And, you know, he brings us information, being a liaison, you know, between us and the college. And to my fellow graduates, Thank you for keeping up the spirit of unity. I know we've been checking on each other and, you know, comparing notes. And I know that this journey has not been an easy one. But we have been resilient. <laughs> and we are going to learn to be more resilient. So thank you all for coming. And to our friends, family members, to my mom. Thank you. I know she was always on my case. How's your dissertation going? Have you finished? How far? You know, we are so grateful. For, to every one of you here, who, to every one of you here who supported us in everything that we did, and may God richly bless you. Thank you. Uh, moving forward, we can make the heart also resilient. <laughs> but it's part of it. And um, it said your ability to bounce back, meaning you can put it back. <laughs> on this note, um, I would want to call on Reverend Professor Julius Esidu Jechi. Um, he's a governing council member. And he's also from uh, the University of Ghana to give us a closing prayer. Um, as, as we draw, we draw the curtain for the event. event. Shall we please be on our feet, feet and let's have a closing prayer. prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning for this successful AGM. Every decision that you've taken, what we've heard, we commit it into your hands. We ask that we we'll use it successfully so that the Ghana College will continue fruitfully to advance in the cause that it has chosen. We commit the dignitaries that are here as they return you take them back home safely. We pay for the rest of the program. Let it be a success to the glory of your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, so, so a few notes um, to draw your attention. Um, right after this session, the photography, would, the official photography, would take place here. So, um, fellow and members and all the governing board, they will all take pictures here. But then all other photographs, family photography, social photography, and that includes selfies and groupies, <laughs> will take uh, place on the ground floor. So these types of uh, photographies would happen this way. And then <laughs> um, for the recession, it will be in a certain order. We have the governing council, then academia, followed by fellows and then members. So in reverse order. So that's how we are going to process. Now you can give us your... <laughs> yeah. So.
Council can join the current show. Okay. Governing Council will take with academic board so we can join the shots. Okay. I think because of the angle, the rest can come up.
Good afternoon, and welcome to the scientific session. Can we all move forward a little bit so that we are too scattered? We are a small group. Thank you very much. You are welcome to this session. We, we hope that we'll make it as brief as possible. We won't waste too much of our time. And at the same time, we hope that we will learn from this. The essence of all this we are doing is, is to empower ourselves with knowledge. So those who are making the presentations, we are going to learn from it. They are also going to learn. And those who are observing, we are also going to learn as I lead this session. I haven't done this before, so I'm also learning. I have my senior police here who are also checking me and giving me tips here and there. So we are all learning, okay? So you're welcome once again to this track, which is the NCDs, Non-Communicable Diseases and Policy Track of the Scientific Session. And we'll have three presentations from three of our, our colleagues. Let me introduce them. Hello. So where where do you want them to be? Docas. 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 He says he wants to move your people into one section. So you tell So for the purpose of recording, he's asking that the CE staff. CES staff are asking that we all move to one um, session like this so that it will be easy to capture us. Yes. So can we all just move to this? <laughs> can we all just move to this session, please, quickly? Emanuela. Hello. Uh, welcome to the second session of our program. My name is Professor Hemi. Uh, this is a scientific session, and we talk of reason why.
papers and we rejected five of them. Rejection is not bad. It tells you go back and look at what you did and correct it so that next year you can present it. I'm impressed. I went to a few of the papers and the scientists, we see that we can get very good scientists in the future. Having said that, I couldn't have done it alone. I mean, I had very good judges to judges and those who chair the function. I think that the session here was chaired by Dr. Mrs. Dr. Spoku Boatin. Is Dr. here? Dr. Thank you very much. And my good friend, Professor Kwame Bwabi, also chaired the other function for us. And during the time that we were doing presentation, they appointed a few people to go around, listen to the talks very critically, and then judge the speakers and see who are the best among the lot. And I think they also judge the posters. Oh, for the MCDs, and policy uh, uh, discussions, we had Dr. F. Amma Nkansa. Is she here? He's outside eating. I'll tell her. <laughs> In the AMR, we have Dr. Augustina Kodua. And, and Dr. Dr. Angela Akon. Akon. For the posters, we have my good friend, Mr. Abraham Jesse. Dr. Samuel Nkansa. And Dr. Susan Edu Amankwa. What are, who are these? Oh, there were two more. She brought it. Mr. Francis Tokono and Doris, Mrs. Doris Atafua. So it's my hope that in the coming years, our poster presentation should be more lively. There will be more signs. We're going to direct our students and then people will also see that we mean business, so the attendance will go up. Thank you all very much. Okay. Um, I think they want the chairman for the two sessions to come up here and say a few words before I give out the awards. But before I go, you see that lady going up there? Her name is Jidaida. She is the one who helped me to put all these things together. In fact, I was away for almost about a week today. I was in the US. As when I came, she has done everything. So the work that we did, it was between that lady and the reactor who did most of the work. They just put my name on it. So, thank you. Uh, coming. Okay, I think ladies first. So. Oh, two minutes. <laughs> so, so we learned at the end of our session that research is interesting. And it need not be complicated. You don't necessarily need to use large sample sizes. You can make meaningful, I mean, deductions from research um, with smaller, relatively smaller numbers. And some were even now so excited, they were saying we should do this thing every quarter. 
We said we may not be realistic. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> we should be doing some of this uh, online before the AGM. So that's positive. And we are, that's to encourage more of us. Um, we, we are saying that patients should, pharmacists should work hand in, should work hard to acquire knowledge about disease conditions and be ready to inform our patients because uh, the impact, um, in order to have a positive impact on our patients' behavior. And we also realize that whenever pharmaceutical services are added to the work of clinical teams, the outcomes are definitely better. We also learned a lot about standard treatment guidelines. We all need to be abreast to the standard treatment guidelines. In fact, work is ongoing to review what we have. And I realized that we should form small, small teams, and we should be doing this regularly. And wherever, wherever we find ourselves, look at the various indications, what is new on the international scene, and try and modify this so that when finally the MOH gets funding to do it on a national scale, we will all be on board, and more of us will be uh, knowledgeable about this. Thank you. Fantastic. Okay. So, um, my track was the AMR track. Um, we're supposed to have three present, not ten up. So, we're able to make a very good use um, of the time. Yeah, so, um, two very good studies. Um, these were clearly, at the end of the day, we realized that these were studies that has relevance for practice, to improve practice, and also for policy. Uh, one was on antibiotic therapy and resistant pattern of clinical isolates um, at the teaching hospital. So um, at the end of the, uh, the day, we realized that the data that was um, generated um, was quite useful, can actually inform local guidelines. But there was some consensus that, you know, there's a need, they were actually using standard treatment guidelines and other guidelines. There was a need to have, you know, local guidelines. Uh, so we gave them some suggestions. Um, how they could go about it. The next study was uh, national surveillance data, which was being collected and being used to um, develop um, anti-biogram. Uh, that was also very stimulating. There a lot of stimulating discussions. Uh, and again, you know, also realized that that can also inform local guidelines. So just don't want to bore you. I think I want to end here. Thank you. Okay. okay. Thank, Thank you, you Kwame and Dorcas. So, I think we have all enjoyed the session. And to make it worth coming here to present, the college decided to give a couple of awards for both sessions. What are you looking for? An idea. Certification. An I think that uh, Madam Rata, uh, next year, I think there should be some um, envelope attached to the certificates. If you, if you go into, if you go into my study, I have several of them, and I keep telling my children, when I die, you won't get anything. This is apart from books. And, and certificates. But if it's money, I'm sure they will look for it. So let's have some money to it for next year. Um, the first award goes to Justice Dobe. That is the best poster presenter. And Justice and his group presented a study of the prevalence of healthcare workers requiring antiretroviral medications after needle stick and sharp injuries in a teaching hospital in Ghana. You know, this is a very important study. And when I went through all, reading all over the 30 abstracts, I had to read all over, all the 30 of them in order to pick the, uh, yeah, to select those that have to be presented orally. And this was one of the topics which actually attracted my attention. So I'm very happy that they got their award. Give it 
na Marciano. Yeah. Good, good, good job. job. I expect I you to bring you a better one next year, okay? Right. And the, the second, second one is the, the best, best oral presenter. presenter. And that, and that goes, goes to Elvis Dorina. Do I hope I, I pronounce his name well. Did I pronounce your name well? All right. <laughs> Factors affecting Grand satisfaction with antiretroviral therapy services in Ghana. And that was also a good paper, and I enjoyed sitting in it. No, you know me very well. That so far as anything called bias is not part of my <laughs> You know that very well, isn't that? Otherwise, you should be a full professor by now. <laughs> okay, okay, thank you all very much, and see you next year. Thank you, Professor. Thank you so much. And thank you all for waiting. Now we are going into the business session. Uh, so we we'll ask Mr. President to please climb up. No, you have to climb up first and, and sit down. And Professor Vice. And our thematic speaker. And um, Brian, can I hand over to you? Okay. All right, so thank you so much. Um, as we progress into the business session, um, we want, we want to take, to take some, some opening remarks, remarks from, from the president, president. Um, after, after which, which we'll, we'll take the rector's report. report. So um, let's, let's appreciate, appreciate the president, president as he comes. He has been introduced, introduced already, so, so I don't want, don't want to go through again. <laughs> um, time is far spent, and uh, I'll just do it snappy. Let me welcome you to the business session. This is a session that we need to discuss pertinent issues that affect the teaching and training and residency for this program. Um, the rector will be giving a comprehensive report, and then we will move into divisions. I think we have three divisions. So the MC will guide us, guide us through that. But I will say that it's been a very eventful morning where some of us have been given membership and fellowship. So. And then a scientific session too wasn't very bad. It was okay, very excellent, with a award of certificates. And let me congratulate those who had been giving certificates to that effect. Um, our business should be snappy. After the rector's report, we will be, we'll discuss the content. So please, turn your, take your pens and papers and jot down issues. Your, your concern should not only be confounded to what the rector will say. Any other matter that you think is of importance to the college, I will encourage everybody to say something or to make suggestions. So you are welcome to the business session. I will hand over to the Madam Rector to give her comprehensive annual reports. <laughs> over to you. Thank you very much. 
Mr. President. Please, can I help? Can I get help to move this? Thank you very much. Mr. President, um, uh, since time is fast spent, please allow me to stand on existing protocols. Thank you very much. So thank you for joining us for the business session for AGM and Scientific Meeting 2023. Earlier today, we had the thematic speech on our theme for AGM Building Resilience into the delivery of pharmaceutical services. We have also heard from pharmacists who have undertaken research or been involved in the implementation of strategy in various areas of practice. During the parallel sessions, we had some very interesting interactions, and I'm sure anyone who was in any of the groups will attest to that. And our chairs for the various plenaries have given us a brief of what happened in their sessions. I am also sure that we have all taken time to engage with the poster presenters and made some input into their research work, particularly those whose work are still ongoing. It is now time for us to discuss what happened over the last few years at the college and chart our next steps forward. Mr. President, the act establishing the college enjoins us to promote specialist training in pharmacy and related disciplines, promote continuous professional development in pharmacy and related disciplines, promote research in pharmaceutical practice and related disciplines, and contribute to the formulation of policies on sound health, medicine, and health generally. The following is a review of our objects as set out, and then we will also look at some cross-cutting matters. On specialist training in pharmacy and related disciplines, we have completed update lectures for both primaries and membership level candidates for the period under review. We have undertaken examinations for candidates who have completed their training at all levels. We have admitted all the cohort of specialists who have met the requirements for admission as fellows and members of the college. The first cycle update lectures for primaries is usually held in person. This cycle includes an orientation of candidates to the college and the programs offered. Candidates are also exposed to the faculties and divisions in the college and the domains of specialization available. When we met last year, in view of the matters that kept on rising after candidates had started, had started the program, we proposed to introduce an interaction of candidates with the various faculties. We were able to have this meeting um, over the year, in the year under review. And during that meeting, Candidates met their various faculty heads and faculty members, members and engaged extensively with them. I am also happy to inform you in pediatric oncology farm so far. The candidates are currently, the three candidates who started this program are currently on an external rotation to Tata Memorial Hospital in India for a three-month internship. We are undertaking a comprehensive evaluation of the program in order to open it up for pharmacists to be admitted whether or not they are enrolled as sponsored candidates. Examinations have been conducted for all candidates at all levels 
who have completed the various levels of training. As you may recall, when we met last year, we informed you that based on an evaluation made by the academic board, examinations at the college would be conducted in person unless otherwise determined. This has been complied with. The Faculty of Clinical Pharmacy last year was eager to conduct bedside assessment for candidates, but the centers where we were supposed to have conducted the assessment indicated that they had not been given sufficient time to accommodate our examinations in their schedules. This year, therefore, we have already started arrangements to ensure that bedside assessment for clinical pharmacy membership and fellowship candidates becomes a reality. In today's faculty meetings, we would like faculties to discuss and divisions to discuss and share during the plenary how we can undertake real, near real life assessment for our candidates. That means faculties other than clinical. Proposal presentations have been organized for all candidates during the period under review. These sessions allow the research ideas of candidates to be honed and brought in line with the objects of the college. They also afford the candidates the opportunity to get inputs from other published specialists on ideas and concepts they may have missed. In the last year, Academic Board decided that it is paramount for candidates to submit their research findings for publication as part of the requirements to be admitted as members of the college. This decision has been adopted by the governing council and has been communicated to the candidates accordingly. We have undertaken periodic monitoring and, and accreditation visits to the sites where we train our candidates over the last few years. A list of our training sites has been provided in the AGM brochure. Although we would like to visit every institution at least once every two years, this is normally not possible, as we do not have the requisite funds and other resources, such as vehicular resources, to execute these plans. We are constructing a management platform for the college. This activity is funded by the PSGH GC Farm Endowment Fund. And I think uh, on this GC Farm Endowment Fund, I'll have to say, Mr. Boche, please stand up and let's clap for you. Thank you very much. He, he saw into the future, realized that we needed that kind of support in place and led the establishment of the endowment fund as president of PSGH. Thank you very much, sir. On continuous professional development, for pharmacy and related disciplines, handling of chemotherapy medications. We have collaborated with Well Child Cancer to train pharmacists from Ghana and across the sub-region in a certificate program in handling chemotherapy medi medications. The program is undertaken over a period of two months and is based in Kolebu Teaching Hospital. Participants are in cohorts of two or more to foster communication and sharing and learning among the participants. Upon completion, they are certified as having acquired the competences to handle chemotherapy medications effectively. The, pass, the participants so far have come from Ghana, Liberia, and Sierra Leone. From Ghana, we have had candidates from the following institutions. Tamale Teaching Hospital, Greater Accra, Regional Hospital, Ho Teaching Hospital, and Trust Hospital. We have evaluated the program and have now put in measures to enable us to admit candidates 
who are not sponsored by World Child Cancer. And I'm happy to inform you that we have admitted our first set of candidates under this, after following this evaluation. This set of two is from the University of Ghana Medical Center. We expect to build on this and establish a strong oncology training center at the college. Asthma care managers, as you may recall, we collaborated with AstraZeneca to train pharmacists as asthma care managers. We have started discussions on establishing a center to provide support for effective community management of asthma in Ghana. The framework is being developed and we expect to be able to finalize and roll out this concept before the end of the year. Pharmacist vaccinators. Last year, we reported that we were beginning a collaboration with PATH. And I must um, just say that PATH was represented here during our opening ceremony. To extend the vaccination training beyond the initial 80 pharmacists who had been trained. I am happy to inform you that since then, we have trained four additional cohorts, including one cohort made up entirely of PharmDs. You will recall that the training is structured in three phases. Conceptual training, which is over a period of 12 hours, hands-on training, four to six weeks, and first aid certification. A pharmacist is required to undertake all these phases of training to be certified as a pharmacist vaccinator. At the moment, 765 pharmacists have completed the conceptual training. Of this number, 339 have completed the hands-on training and 291 have been first aid certified. So those who have the 299 to 291 are now certified as pharmacist vaccinators. We send periodic updates to the Ministry of Health and the Pharmacy Council as pharmacists complete the training and are certified. In December 2022, and the Deputy Minister mentioned it in her speech, the Ministry of Health launched guidelines for vaccination against COVID-19 and other vaccine-preventable diseases in community pharmacies. This is to provide guidance on how pharmacists can provide vaccination services from community pharmacies. During this launch, following this launch, the college has facilitated the rollout of a pilot for this program. Unfortunately, the support from PATH for vaccination training has come to an end. In view of requests from pharmacists on training as vaccinators, we have undertaken an evaluation of costs of training with a view to making the training self-financing and sustainable. We will soon be announcing the recruitment for a new cohort of trainees. Thank you. Research in pharmaceutical practice and related disciplines. The GCP Journal. Last year, we informed you about the successful launch of the GCP Journal, the peer review journal of the college. Due to some technical difficulties, we have been unable to come out with the issues as we had originally aimed to. But today, I am happy to inform you that the journal is now totally online and available to access. So volume one, number two, to volume two, number two of the journal have been published. And Mr. President, please, I would like to take a few minutes to take all of us through so we can access it. Um, if you have the brochure, you should have the QR code to the journaling system. So you can just scan the QR code. You can use your camera. I, I, I don't know about um, Apple, but I know that
Samsung, if you just use your camera, it will take you there. You don't need the QR code reader. You don't need it if you are using Samsung. I don't know about. If you are using Android, yes, I don't know about Apple. Uh -huh. But if you are using Android, you can just use your camera and put it on the QR code and it will scan it and take you there. And if you are online, the link to the system should be in the chat box. And so you can scan the QR code or click on the system. And if you have done that, you can browse the system. And I'm sure by now, if you have been able to do that, you can see the journal. I know that when you open it on a phone, it is a bit dark. But don't worry. When you get home and you open it on a laptop, you will see how beautiful it looks on the laptop. The phone one gives you just the top part first, so it looks a bit dark. But just scroll and you will see the articles that are in the journal. And to submit a paper, so as we, I said earlier, you right now you can submit a paper at any time when your paper is ready. You don't have to wait for the call. And once we open up a call for, uh, for you to submit abstracts for AGM, you can submit online. But in order to do that, you must log in. So you have to create an account. I am not, I think on the top right corner, you should see log in over there. If you click on that, you will get a dialog box opening. At the bottom, you have the option to register. And when you get that option to register, you just put in your email address and um, the password that you want and you verify and you are on. So subsequently, you can log in and um, submit your papers. So now, we are online. All the information, all our, our articles right now are online. If you published in the journal, if you submitted a paper and we told you that it was coming out, it's out. You can click on it, read it, you have the option to download it. And I will encourage all of us, maybe when we get home, right now if you do that, you won't hear the rest of my speech, my report. So uh, when you get home and you log on, download the, some of them. And just look at the format of the download. And I am sure while you are there, you'll be clapping that, uh, yes, college is doing well. Yes, yes. Thank you very much. So the GCP journal is peer reviewed by experts in academia and pharmacy practice and provides a golden opportunity to publish our work as pharmacists and scientists. I would urge fellows and members to take steps to publish their research in the journal. With this online system, we can submit our papers at any time the paper is ready. And once a call for abstracts for AGM 2022 is made, we can submit our abstracts for review. The more we publish good quality work, the stronger the journal becomes. And the more our contribution as a college to healthcare becomes recognized. The Masterclass Series. As part of the celebrations for the 10th anniversary of the college, we instituted the Masterclass Series. This series equipped participants with the skills needed to publish their findings in operational and professional research. The recordings of the series are available on the college website. I would like us all to visit the website, watch the videos, learn from them, and contribute to publishing our findings as practitioners. The number of abstracts we have for this year's scientific conference may well be a testament to the effectiveness of the masterclass series. We have commenced a review of the series to apply it to other important skills for pharmacists and other scientists, and also to make it more attractive to potential participants. 
We are also required to contribute to the formulation of policies in sound health, medicine, and health generally. One important contribution to the formulation of policies is the publication of the GCP journal. It provides information on current trends in pharmaceutical care as well as new pathways in the practice of pharmacy. We have actively participated in policy discussions at both national and international levels. We have issued statements during the celebration of World Health Days. We have also conducted panel discussions on various themes to educate healthcare professionals and members of the public about relevant topics. We have participated in health sector summits, including the just ended one, and two posters on what we are doing at the college were submitted at FIP 2022 and were very well received by participants during the Congress. And an abstract has also been submitted for FIP 2023 on what is being done at the college, and that has also been accepted as a poster. Now on to cross-cutting matters, Mr. President. So matters on fellows and members. Our website is very vibrant and informative. It is interactive and provides up-to-date information on the goings-on in the college. But periodic um, look at the, looks at the background, like in the background of the website, to see how many of us fellows are visiting it is not encouraging. So please, I'll urge all of us, once a while, maybe we can put it on our calendar, once a month to visit the website to see what is happening, if there is anything new, and engage the college. This year, we have admitted 12 fellows by nomination. These fellows utilize the guidelines that are set up and published on the, web, on the website and were admitted, having complied with the requirements set out. We expect these fellows to bring their experience and expertise on board for the benefit of the college. We recently sent a revised link for fellows to update their information with us. I think it was about a month ago when I sent a, a, a mail to fellows and then I got a bounce back on some of the names. Mr. President, I would like to urge all fellows to provide us with the updated information. So maybe if you, you, you received the link, the mail, but you know somebody who didn't, please send it to them and let them update their information with us. We have also created a link for fellows to confirm their status as to whether or not they are in good standing with the college. This will ensure that by AGM, we will all be on the same page with respect to our status. A similar link has been created for members to be able to ascertain they are standing with the college. Mr. President, we are working towards establishing a fellows lounge for fellows to be able to have maybe short meetings at the college when they come into town. Maybe your office is far away. You want to have a meeting. As a fellow, that's the least we can do for you. The budget for effectively establishing this lounge, as of last year, was 140,000. When I mentioned 140,000 today, I was asked dollars, and I said, oh no, it's CDs. So then it was, oh, CDs, that is CDs, yeah. And we should be able to raise CDs. Uh, during the uh, celebration of our 10th anniversary, we raised 37,000 CDs in pledges. Not all of them have been redeemed. But this leaves a gap of about uh, 103,000. And we'll be asking for a discussion on how we can raise this amount to get the launch off the ground 
during the open forum. We are also open to accept a donation of 103,000 CDs to help us complete the launch. At the Secretariat, Mr. President, all staff members have undergone first aid training to equip them to be able to respond to emergencies in or out of work. Conditions of service have been finalized for staff of the college. A scheme of service is being developed for the college establishment. An update will be given as they become available. A three-year rolling plan has been prepared by the academic board for implementation by the college. In the, pre in the period under review, we had cause to mourn with some staff members who were bereaved. But we also had times of celebration as we welcomed two members into our family in the form of a healthy baby boy and a lovely wife. We thank God for his goodness. On our strategic plan, which has been developed and we have received comments from fellows and the comments have all been incorporated into the strategic plan. The pillars of the plan are as follows. Institutional capacity development, education and training, research and publication, financial sustainability, quality assurance, partnership and collaboration, publicity and marketing. So, as I mentioned, fellows have made inputs, and during the breakout meetings, we'll be asking faculties and divisions to see how they can contribute to the effective implementation of their strategic plan, of their strategic plan, with a focus on their faculty and division. Pharmacy practice projects. Mr. President, the concept of the pharmacist vaccinator is not only to train the pharmacists, but for the college to be a coordination center for pharmacist participation in vaccination. To this end, the project also includes facilitating the rollout of pharmacist involvement in vaccination from community pharmacies. The college has facilitated the accreditation of duly qualified facilities as follows. We have developed a checklist for pre-accreditation visits, which has been adopted by the Pharmacy Council. We have also compiled the pharmacists and pharmacies that are ready to participate in the pilot phase. We have procured financial support. And once again, I must say that financial support came from PATH to support the intense pre-certification visits that were to be conducted by Pharmacy Council. And we have also engaged Ghana Health Service and some district health directorates to ensure a seamless rollout of the project. The Pharmacy Council has conducted pre-certification visits for 30 community pharmacies in the following regions, Greater Accra, Ashanti, Central and Western. 34 of the facilities have been approved by Pharmacy Council to commence the delivery of vaccination services by certified pharmacists. Thank you. On external relations, existing collaborations, we have maintained relations with other colleges of postgraduate health training. And over the year, we have engaged the rectors of sister colleges on matters that affect us commonly. We have maintained good relations with partner and sister institutions for effective collaboration. And Mr. President, might I add that in the course of this year, 
We also joined, we received an invitation from WAPCP and we joined them during their annual meeting. We are collaborating with the College of Health Sciences, KNUST, to provide dual qualifications for applicants. We have identified the qualifications that could be obtained jointly. We are currently finalizing the curriculum to meet accreditation requirements, which is a requirement for KNUST. And the joint qualifications are membership and MPhil and fellowship and PhD. The programs that under which the joint qualifications may be obtained are pharmacy practice, pharmacology, pharmaceutical technology, and phytochemistry. We have a collaboration with the Royal Pharmaceutical Society of Great Britain, by which members of the college can become, by which fellows of the college can become members of the Royal Society and have access to various opportunities and facilities. During FIP Congress 2022, a delegation led by pharmacist Harrison Abutiate met with the president of the Royal Pharmaceutical Society to discuss the expectations of fellows of the college who have signed up as members of the Royal Society. After some follow-up engagements, the president of the Royal Pharmaceutical Society has assured the college that all issues will be clarified during a side meeting at FIP 2023. New collaborations. We have signed a memorandum of understanding with Empower School of Health for collaboration. A presentation by the school was made at the climax of our 10th anniversary celebration. After this, Discussions hit a bit of snack because of some technical, legal issues on the MOU. But these have been ironed out, and we expect to announce our joint programs very soon. We have also begun collaboration with the Novartis Value Chain Academy to roll out the following programs in October and November of this year. Quality in Supply Chain and supply chain management. Mr. President, fellows, members, ladies and gentlemen, all these strides have been made within the context of great challenges. Some of these I've already mentioned earlier, but they bear repeating. We are yet to obtain clearance for staff for the full complement of staff for the college. The existing staff are overburdened. This results in important matters falling through the cracks, remaining undone, and resulting in de uh, delays in work output. While the staff have been committed to the college, I would suggest that this extended period of being overburdened could result in burnout among staff members. It would be a real shame if the steady growth of the college were to be hampered because of a pandemic of exhaustion, or maybe in this case an epidemic of exhaustion among staff members. I'll be grateful if this AGM would come up with suggestions on how to support, how support could be obtained for the smooth and effective running of the college, which does not require expenditure from the college. The financial support received from the government of Ghana and the Ministry of Health by extension over the period under review has been with respect to the payment of salaries of seven members of staff who are on government payroll. That's all. This has resulted in a limitation on what can be done in the college. The dues from fellows and members support greatly the activities, such as meetings for faculties, 
training for fellows and members, and other critical activities of the college. As you may have observed, if you have visited the site that shows the fellows in good standing, the list of fellows in good standing is very short compared to the list of fellows on roll. And unfortunately, this is even better than the list of members in good standing. On the other hand, remaining in good standing is a requirement for continuing to hold oneself out as a fellow or member of the Ghana College of Pharmacists. I take this opportunity to ask fellows and members to settle their dues with the college in the shortest possible time. Indeed, we have a desk there. If you pay your dues right now, you will get your receipt. You will get your receipt. No, you won't, we won't take a picture and send it to you. You'll get the hard copy of the receipt. And as I mentioned during the opening ceremony, we do not have a vehicle for monitoring. And, and, and this is a very essential activity for a specialist training institution like ours. We would be grateful if we could have suggestions on how to acquire a vehicle. Better yet, we would be very grateful for a donation of a good, strong vehicle for monitoring. In conclusion, Mr. President, we are making very major strides towards attaining our vision of the college. We also have very major challenges that result in formidable setbacks against our forward march. Although the vision is bright and clear, we do have clouds darkening our skies and raising emotions of concern as we march forward. But with all of us putting our shoulders to the wheel and working at meeting our objectives, we should get at last to our dream of a world-class specialist training institution of choice for all who seek specialization in pharmacy and related disciplines. We look forward to more progress in the coming months and years. May God bless the Ghana College of Pharmacists and God bless us all. Thank you. Uh, okay, before you take the microphone, please, having presented my report, I move that this report be adopted for discussion in our business session. And third, okay. Thank you very much. All right, thank you so much, um, Dr. Rector, for the speech and then the report um, on the college as, as uh, read. Uh, at this point, I think I saw a lot of us writing and making notes. I want to suspect that there are uh, issues that we want to raise and clarifications and all that. So the floor is open and um, we want to know your thoughts and your feedback on the report. Am I seeing a hand on my left? Yeah. Okay. I think you can, if we can have a second mic or there's one here. Hello, hello. Okay, hello. Okay. Thank you, Madam, for such a wonderful report. I have just a suggestion. Um, it's true we need money to run this institution. I believe we can look at other ways of making this money, and everybody will just join hands and we'll raise the money. One. 
as a requirement for a specialist grade or promotion or consultancy, whatever, you need to be a, a member or a fellow of the Ghana Institute of the Ghana College of Pharmacists. So before somebody is cleared, we can make it maybe a max that you come for clearance from the college. Okay, before you move or before you get to the specialist grade, you should come for clearance. Like some of our promotional um, requirements, you need to take clearance from the pharmacy council. You can also come for clearance from here. And the second one is, I'm just pleading if it's possible to look at the amount we pay. We all want to pay, but sometimes when we look at the amount, then we pull back. So I'm just pleading if we can come to a level that all can contribute so that we can have everybody on board to raise the money for the college. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Okay. Do we have a response? A comment? Sorry. Let me thank my sister for this laudable suggestion. And indeed, we are also thinking of how best to utilize the conferment of membership or fellowship on our members. Um, but what you suggested, I think in the Health Profession Regulatory Bodies Act, the regulator has that responsibility of entering additional qualification. But we are still partners. I think we can engage them in some dialogue and see whether they can route that process through us before maybe we could be some uh, sharing, maybe the sharing arrangement. They can even, because they have other avenues, maybe it depends on how we articulate our points. I think we will have to visit this issue with them so that um, when you are about to get promoted or you are about to end, um, attend interview, there should be a recommendation from the college, and then that, that, that can be done. But we'll have to take it up from the council first. That's my comment. Thank you very much, Mr. President. And let me also add my voice, Rector, for a good job done, in spite of all the challenges. There is something that concerns me um, about the college. Um, you know, what I've realized throughout my, all my academic, professional career in the college is that, you know, you need passion. You need commitment and a drive. You know that you do. Um, this was the first time I've made this observation. I mean, any time we have a, an AGM, um, you know, the procession, very beautiful. All of us are here, you know, and all of that. But when it comes to the business section, you know, and then you see that uh, just just a handful, and I think that is quite worrying. Particularly worrying is people who have just been inducted. I mean, people who have just been um, admitted into membership, and, and yet after all the scientific session and the lunch, you know, uh, I think we need to look at this. Yes, uh -huh. we really look to. I mean, this is our college. We have to make the college. We have to be interested in the college. And I think we need to work on it. Unfortunately, the people I'm talking to are not here. But I hope the message will go. <laughs> yeah. It reminds me of the famous story of the preacher who was asked that, preacher, tell them. <laughs> All the people committing the sins were not in the room. They were outside the room. So. <laughs> but I think you had a second one. Okay, there's a second hand here. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Rector, Rector President, uh, colleagues, even for coming. I think this, this is my first 
one, one. so which I'm equally guilty. guilty. <laughs> but um, I wanted to touch on the membership fee thing. A lot of us also belong to other societies, so we pay, we pay, but one of the things that I would recommend that maybe we adopt is even monthly payments, or even if it's quarterly. That may not be as heavy as coming to dish out thousand, thousand, two at a time. No. That's why several other societies, that may be one thing that can maybe help ease the burden. If that, that, if that will work with, this, with our society. Thank you. Um, thank you very much for the suggestion. Indeed, if you give us um, a, a check every month, which will clear throughout the year, so that by the end of the year you are in good standing, we, we, we accept it. Yes, we, we accept it. We don't say that wait and pay everything at a go. But definitely by the time, you know, when the year is beginning and all of that, you are supposed to be in good standing. But otherwise, if you pay quarterly, if you give us quarterly checks, we will update your account. Yes, thank you. There's a hand up, up and then we'll come to, okay. Good afternoon. Uh, th I just want to add, add a suggestion. Since uh, most of these bigger pharmaceutical companies are part of us, if we could send a suggestion to them so that they make some donation to this effect, I think it will help. That's just about it. Engaging big pharma. Big pharmaceutical companies. Companies, okay. Yeah. Okay, so I can see that is noted as a suggestion. Yeah, good afternoon. Another suggestion on the funding of the college. Uh, college of Pharmacists is for pharmacists. And then we have our Society for Society of Ghana. Uh, there was a time that uh, before, I think, Pharmacy Council was playing this vital role, collecting um, the dues for the society. Before you pay your dues at the council for you to be in good standing. You should have cleared yourself with the society before coming to the council. I think that arrangement is not in place anymore. So people go to council, they clear themselves, they are in good standing, and then we have a backlog at the society. My suggestion is that we should look at a system where as fellows, as members, um, that is, we should have agreed on the dues. My sister was talking about the amount involved. So we can add it to the society's dues, the annual dues. And then once you are a fellow of the college, you are a member of the college, it is added to your P PSGH dues. Uh -huh. so, so before, before you, you clear yourself, yourself there and go to council, um, automatically, college would have received their portion as a member, as a fellow of the college. That is my suggestion. We should explore this and see if it will be feasible. Thank you. Yes, please. Thank you very much. I want to bring this as part of the contribution as to how to raise funds. Sometimes the mode of payment is a challenge to some of us. So if you have a short code where you can use that and the money will be delivered, it will go a long way to help in the payment of the dues and probably other financial obligations. So probably you can explore that option. And even going forward, if you say every month, a pharmacy should contribute 10 CDs through a short code, Look at our number and the passionate, the way we appeal to our members passionately, it's not be difficult for us to pay 10 CDs every month until such a time that probably we've raised sufficient money to do other projects. So let's look at that short code, 10 CDs contribution every month until we have raised sufficient money. Thank you. Okay, yes. My 
name is uh, ACP Augustine Kokukoko. Retired, but not tired. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yes. Um, the questions I'm going to ask, I may exhibit some ignorance, but forgive me. From the questions or contributions of some of the people, I think some of the questions have been answered. I was going to ask, what is our structure? We have membership and we have fellowship. Am I correct? Yes. And the dues, are they structured for members and fellows differently and not the same? Oh, okay. All right. So that is clear. Uh, I don't know how high it is because I'm not in good standing. I checked the list. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, but uh, as he said, if it could be made easier, payment could be made easier, you could probably have a, a moment number, I don't know whether we have, which would be easier for some of us to pay. Uh, you could also have a system online through maybe Paystack or any other digital payment system, which when you pay, they give you receipt immediately. I just made payment to an organization, a government organization, Ghana Tourism, and, and then they received the money and I had an automatic receipt showing that your money had been received. So if you make it easy for us, it should not be difficult to pay at all. That, 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 that is my contribution. And I'm happy that it is structured, you know. And uh, I think, uh, we can also make the monthly, is by choice. Yeah, I think you are right on that score. That, that's all I want to say. Yeah, thank you all very much. It's a pleasure seeing most of my colleagues here. Yeah, old faces. Some of my students. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yeah, okay. Thank you very much. ACP Kokokoko. Retired but not tired. Okay, so on the on the on the donations from pharmaceutical companies. We try. We try and sometimes we do get I think last year we got some support from a few pharmaceutical companies, but this year we didn't. So when we do, we put their names, names on the on the, the on the, the brochure. brochure. It's, it's just that, that the college, college are, 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 are I think I, I, I want to I want to surmise that, that they see us as not as many as PSGH. And, and so, and so if they are making a contribution, contribution perhaps they do not view it as that it will be as cost effective as if they gave that money to PSGH, for instance. For PSGH AGM, you know there are thousands of pharmacists who will be there. But we normally do not have that high numbers. And it is possible that, for instance, last year, those who gave, because they were present, and they saw our numbers, and they decided that it was not worth their while. But we do. Every year we do. We send them requests, we explain, all the various ways in which they can support and all that. Once in a while, we do get support for our CPDs.